In the previous video in this course, which I've linked here and below, I showed you how to run Python on box. So run Python on a Nexus device and use CLI commands running within Python on the Nexus device. In this video, we're going to create a Python script and run it locally on my laptop and SSH to the Nexus device and extract data from the Nexus device. I wanna show you why it's powerful using formatted data. So using data in JSON format rather than just in a string. It makes extracting information so much easier. Okay, so let's get started and I'm gonna show you how to run Python locally, SSH to a Nexus device and extract information from that Nexus device. Okay, so I'm tired of using Python on the box now. What I'm gonna do is start an Ubuntu VM on my local Mac. Now I'm using Linux. I strongly suggest, just like Python, that you learn Linux. Linux is one of those core skills. You're gonna use it everywhere. So make sure that you learn Linux. So here I'm going to open up a terminal This is on my local computer. It's not in DevNet, this is local. And what I'm gonna do is install Python pip3 and NetMiko. Basically, what we're doing is we're installing Python 3 on the Ubuntu PC, and we're installing NetMiko, which is a great way to connect to network devices. Rather than you writing all the low-level code to SSH to a network device, and then send commands to a network device and then interpret the output. NetMiko is your first step in automation because the developer of NetMiko has done a lot of the hard work already and you can just leverage that code in your Python scripts. One of the advantages of Python is there are a whole bunch of libraries available, including NetMiko, including PyATS, including Nornia, that make our lives as network engineers a lot simpler. Don't reinvent the wheel. Use the code and the hard work that others have done and import those libraries into your code and just leverage them. Don't reinvent the wheel. Now, I've already installed these commands on my Ubuntu PC, but I'll paste them here just to show you the process. So sudo apt install python3 pip, and then I'm gonna install netmiko. Once again, I have previously installed the software, so it should all be good. Just in case you wanna know what release I'm using, I'm using Ubuntu 18.04.3 LTS. So this command lsb release-a shows me the version of Ubuntu that I'm using. So I'm just using one of the later releases of Ubuntu. So I'll clear the screen. And now let's create a script. So here's my script. I'm gonna copy it into that Ubuntu computer and then I'll show you how to use it. I'm gonna create a script called python1.py. Not a good name, but it's okay for this demonstration. And I'm gonna paste that code in. This is importing the library NetMiko. So I'm gonna basically leverage the power of NetMiko to connect to my Nexus device. Here's the username, here's the password, here's the port. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna complain, so I'll just say it right now. You don't have to store the credentials in your script. You could prompt for them if you wanted to. I'm just gonna store it here to keep it simple. It's a lab anyway, so it doesn't matter. I just wanna show you how simple it is to extract information from a remote router. This router is running probably in the state somewhere, I don't know. It's hosted by DevNet, and I'm gonna pull back the show IP interface brief output and display it on my computer. So this is an example of a dictionary in Python. Notice the formatting. Does that look familiar? Hopefully that looks familiar. But it's a little bit different here to JSON because in JSON formatting, we don't use single inverted commas. Basically, this is a dictionary storing the information that we need to connect to the router this command allows me to connect to the router, and then this allows me to send a command to the router. In this case, show IP interface brief. We store that in a variable, and then we print the results out. So I'll save that script. I'm gonna use Python 3 to run that script. 
Okay, I'm getting an error, and this is one of the things you need to be careful with using PowerPoint. Notice the difference between that and this. Don't use PowerPoint. Use a text editor. I typically use Sublime Text or Visual Studio Code. Notice that's gone green now, so that looks better. I'll save that script. Python 3, Python 1.py. Script seems to be working now. So this is SSHing to that device and then running the command and then hopefully will display the output and there you go. We can see the output on that remote Nexus device on my Ubuntu computer. On the SSH session to the Nexus show IP interface brief, there's the output of my direct SSH session and here's the output using my Python script. Okay, so once again, I could simply type Python 3, Python 1.py. Python 3 means I'm using Python 3. Python 1 is the name of my script, and I can see the output. It's as simple as that to retrieve that data from that Nexus device. But let's try and do something more intelligent with the data. Okay, so this is just for us as humans. Show IP interface brief doesn't really help us. What I'm gonna do now, however, is use the command JSON pretty. So this line in yellow is actually the only change in the script, but I've put the full script in this PowerPoint presentation so that you can download it. So let's use Nano. Nano, once again, Nano is a simple text editor, similar to Notepad on Windows, if you like. So I'm gonna say Nano Python 2, and what I'll do is paste my script in here. Here it pasted it correctly. So I'll save that script. Only difference once again is this. So Python 3, run the second script. This should give us our JSON information. So we should be able to get the JSON information back from the Nexus device. And there you go. So scrolling up, by using that single command, I've now been able to SSH to the device retrieve the data, it's in JSON format. Notice double inverted commas, we've got a colon, we've got a comma at the end. Make sure you recognize this formatting. I've said it once again many times. If you don't have a colon there, that would be an incorrect answer. If this is a semicolon, that would be an incorrect answer. It has to look like this. No comma at the end here. Okay, but once again, that's just given us some data, perhaps not that useful, but let's do something useful with the data now, and let's get the prefix from the data and the interface. So basically, I'm using a script now to pull back the first interface and the first IP address. Don't worry, in the next script, I'm gonna show you how to do that for multiple interfaces. So now, Alice, we've got two Python scripts. Let's create a third Python script. So nano Python, 3.py, I'll paste the script in. The stuff that we've added is this. So we're pulling back specific interface information. Now, I have made done something bad here. I'm using double inverted commas and single inverted commas in Python. You should standardize on one. I'll fix that in the script that I give you, but that's fine. Python will accept that, even though it's not great practice. But hopefully what will happen now is this will connect to that Nexus device. Once again, SSHing across the internet and it's gonna pull back first interface, first IP address and then display that. And there we go. Okay, so just to prove it, here's my Nexus device once again. First interface, first IP address. There's that information. Now you might say, okay, but I want the state information, so something like this. Remember, we can simply edit that using our script. So let's edit the script. So rather than just seeing this data, what we said is we wanna get protocol state information. So I'll copy that line, paste it here, and what we want is proto state is the name that they use and I'll save the script. So run it again. 
So we should get the protocol status, we should get the interface name, we should get the IP address. This, however, will only be for one interface. Next script, I'll change that and make it better. Now, the formatting here is not great. I mean, that's just saying up. You could print out information. This is the whole idea with iteration. So rather than just saying that, you could say print interface. And while I'm here, let's fix this. So I'd have to fix that for all the data to be consistent. I could do a find and replace, I suppose. That would actually make a lot more sense than doing it manually. But the idea in Python is something called PEP8. PEP8 is talking about best practices. The moral of the story is be consistent. So we could say print uh, IP address. print protocol status. These are just examples. You could do what you wanted here. And this is the power of programming. You just change it the way that you want it to changed. Okay, so it's got a problem. And this is my Python 2 history getting to me. In Python 3, we need to use a function for print. Print is a function. So this needs to be in brackets. Save that, run it again. Hopefully, this once again will connect to that Nexus device and will tell us IP address, interface, and protocol status, and also show it in a little bit nicer format. So here we go, there's the output of that script. Now you might say, okay, but I want the information for all interfaces. So I've got this script across two PowerPoint slides here. What I'm doing here is creating a loop. So we are using a for loop here. What we're doing is getting the length of the rows. So how many rows are there? So if we jump back onto the device, so this is SSHing directly to the device. Show IP interface brief JSON pretty. Row interface tells us how many interfaces there are. One two, three, four, etc. Show IP interface brief would just show us that. So here are all the interfaces. This length command allows me to work out how many interfaces there are, and then it just loops those commands for the number of interfaces that we've got. Okay, so first thing is NetMiko configuration. So Alice, we're now working on Python script four, so python four.py. I'll paste that in. That basically, once again, just allows me to connect to the device. Didn't have enough space in PowerPoint. I'll copy this into the VM now. So the big difference now is it's using the command and then finding out how many interfaces there are and then using a loop to basically run these commands multiple times for the number of interfaces that we have. So clear the screen, Python 3, Python 4.py. This should hopefully now give us IP address and interface name for all the interfaces on that device. And to prove it, I'll create some extra interfaces and run the script again, and we should see that. So there you go, all the interfaces on the device and the IP addresses. So if I show that side by side, they are all the interfaces on the device and their IP addresses. But let's create another loopback. So let's create a loopback to IP address 2222 slash, slash 32 mask. Interface loop three IP address slash 32 mask. Show IP interface brief. I've just created two additional loopback interfaces. So run that script again. This is once again connecting to that device in DevNet and pulling back the information and there you go. Additional loopback interfaces are shown. Just to prove it once more, last interface loopback four, IP address quadruple four, 
show IP interface brief, new interfaces created, run the script again. We didn't previously have loopback four in the output here, but hopefully we will now. And there we go. So why are we using JSON? Much easier to work with this kind of data when you've got a Python script. It's very difficult to find information if it's a string, if it's just data that's in an unformatted format. So if it's just some kind of data that's like this capture, not easy for a machine to read that. We wanna put it in a format that's easy for a machine to query and interpret. Your Python scripts are gonna be so much easier if the data is in JSON, trust me. Try and do that kind of stuff with just strings and passing the string, trying to find where the data is and extracting a piece of data. It's very hard to do that with traditional mechanisms. So much easier if the data is correctly formatted using JSON or even XML or YAML. Big idea for doing this is to make it easy for machines to read.